Everybody all in? All, in. all right. You know, when I attempted to prepare what I was going to say when I have this opportunity to be up here, my mind went blank. And I was sitting in my car and I was watching, looking in my front yard and saying how barren it looked, how it looked so cold and dreary. And then I turned my head and I saw some little yellow dandelions coming up. And I say uh, that's my analogy for what looks like it's hard and difficult and desolate might not always be because that little yellow flower gave me another ray of hope. And so we, what something is packaged in is not what we should be paying attention to. We should be paying attention to the heart and the head. So can everybody join me in just standing on your feet and giving God some praise? Because he is worthy of all praise and all honor and all glory. It's nobody like him. It's nothing that he can't do. So in every situation, let him give him praise and honor. He is do that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord, for everything that you do for us. You woke us up and we're all here and may we return to our homes in safety. We thank you for everything, Lord God. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, you are worthy. None other like you, Lord. We're going to have prayer this morning by Sister Tiffany, and we're going to have the scripture by Sister Maddie, and we're going to have our praise and worship team come and, you know, fill us up so we can go back out there and give it to the world, right? All right. So we're going to pray. Um, so everybody, can you just bow your heads and join with me? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, Lord God, just to say thank you, Lord God. We're so grateful and so thankful for everything that you have done, everything that you continue to do, Lord God. Each and every day, Lord God, we don't deserve it, Lord God. But we, we just thank you for loving us in spite of us, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to see this cold, sunny day. Thank you for allowing us to feel it, Lord God, and see it and just be in it, Lord God. There's some people who weren't able to, um, but we are thankful for the opportunity to see another day and to get things right. Lord God, we just thank you for bringing us through another week. Um, we might have... Uh, had some tests and trials, Lord God, during the week, but we just thank you that through it all, you brought us through, um, that you just allowed us to, you know, continue on and um, to just experience another day, Lord God. We just pray, Lord God, for this service, Lord God. We pray for the praise team, Lord God. We pray for the pastor. We pray for everyone else who has any kind of activities that they're doing, Lord God, for this service, Lord God. We just pray that you will just have your way, Lord God. Have your way in this place, Lord God. We already feel your presence, Lord God, and we just pray that you will just continue to just fill us up, Lord God, and um, just, just be with us, Lord God, throughout this whole service, Lord God, and throughout the day. Lord God, we just, um, we just pray that you will allow us to continue to be all in for you, Lord God. Um, there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, we're trying to accomplish and everything, but God, just being all in and just, just knowing that you are here for us, Lord God, that you deserve us to be all in for you, Lord God. You, you deserve everything that we are giving you, Lord God. Um, and we just pray that you just Watch over us throughout this week until we meet again on um, next week, Lord God. Um, and I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Black History Month. Woo-hoo. Yeah. All right. Amen. So, you know, and I didn't plan to speak about black history, but it's just on my heart because uh, we've come a long way, y'all. Amen. God has kept and blessed just African American people in this nation because uh, there was a time where we just, Lord, I can't even imagine what it was like to be owned by somebody. That, that's, a, that's, a, that's a situation. So um, I'm thankful today that God has blessed us and kept us. And through the prayers of our ancestors, you know, we've made it this far. Amen. That's just proof that God is awesome. Amen. He is awesome. Psalm 47 says the Lord Most High is awesome. Yeah. He is a great king over all the earth. And so we're just going to honor him this morning in our invocation song. And title is Awesome. Amen. 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 So y'all just worship the Lord, bless the Lord, praise the Lord with us. Awesome. Father, this is our worship. This is our prayer. We're just going to acknowledge you. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. My God. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. Come on, think about where you come from. My God. He's mighty. 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 He's migh
Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. You are awesome. Greatly to be praised. Thank you, Father God. You're a protector, yes. healer, deliverer. You're holy. Thank you, God. We bless your name this morning. Thank you, Lord. Lord, even in our, in our weak strength, we bless you. We say hallelujah because you are worthy of the praise. Even when we don't feel like it, God, we still say hallelujah. Things are going on in our lives, but we just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because you said it will work out for our good. You're an on-time God. You may not come when we always want you, but you are always there right on time. We bless you. We give you the praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In spite of ourself, Lord God, you've been good. We lay down all of our cares and our thoughts, our sin at your feet, and we ask, Lord God, for forgiveness. You are awesome. We bless you today. We give you praise. We take time out this morning just to honor you, to give you glory. Each day is a gift. It's not promised. All week, Lord, you allow me to pass by and see accidents on the highway and on the street where people got hurt and injured. But you are a healer. You're a protector. You allow me to ride by and just see it. I give you praise and thanks. So many of us, Lord God, were protected, were healed. We're prevented from catastrophe just because of your grace and mercy, not because we deserved it. So we thank you this morning. We give you praise. You are awesome. Sometimes you keep us in the valley, and it's a low place. Sometimes we need to, we need to be there so that we can grow. So we can appreciate the times where you raise us up in those high times of life. So we thank you even in the valley. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, we've learned here at BVCC that healthy things grow. And Lord, we desire to grow in you. Thank you for being an awesome guy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap 
if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. I got lost. Announcements? We have announcements? Oh, it's up there for me. Okay. <laughs> okay. All over the place. Okay. Oh, um, welcome, first time guest. If we have any first time guests, um, we're not going to ask for a DNA sample or anything like that. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and w w we ask that at the end of the service that you give it to our pastor here, and he will have a gift to share with you for coming to join us today. Thank you. Okay. And this is the part where I think we got one minute extended. We got five minutes. Get up and hug and love on each other. And say hi, how you doing? Say hi to somebody you don't know. Okay? Okay? Come on now. <laughs> Whether we rise or fall, we do it together. We are BBCC.
All righty, all righty, all righty. That was fun. How's everybody today now? How you feeling? All right. Come on, y'all. All right. Just have a few announcements. We'd like to wish happy birthday to Stephanie Winder. Mariah Williams. Woo, happy birthday. So join us after church today. It's first Sunday. Uh, we have a meal plan. Um, actually, it's a competition. We need everyone's help to vote. I believe it's the chili cook-off, right? All right. Super Bowl Sunday. Is that next week? I thought it was this weekend. So next week, wear your jerseys, um, whether your team is playing or not. <laughs> and mine's not. <laughs> um, just for fun, wear your jerseys next Sunday, um, just to have a little fun uh, representing your team. And OK, so the invite challenge. What happened in power? Calling you all out. Uh, we did meet our goal. Uh, we have 56 invites total. Fantastic team. However, Embrace won again. So, again, yeah. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm sorry, Pastor. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, sit down. <laughs> Uh, somebody from Empower? I mean, I'm sorry. That, <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> Embrace. Thank you, champ. Yay! And the uh, most invites? Oh, hey. Congratulations. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we're bringing back the praise and worship team. And uh, y'all get on your feet and uh, let's welcome the Lord in again. Thank you, guys. So this next song we're going to sing is called Pour Your Oil. Um, and if anybody knows, the oil represents the power and presence of God. And I don't know about y'all, but I need God to pour his oil on me. It's been a rough week. It's been uh, trying, but God is still good, right? So, you know, just as we are singing this song, just re really get in your mind, like, God, I need your presence just to fall yeah. on me because I can't do it in my own strength. Amen. So just join with us as we worship and uh, deliver this song. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
Just right where you are, if you could just close your eyes for a minute and focus on the Lord. I know there's things going on in your life and your mind may be in a million places. You may be dealing with the stress of the week, the weight of bills, some decision might be dealing with people. Maybe you're dealing with the condemnation of your past mistakes. No matter where we find ourselves today, we are in the right place. See, there's no better place to be than in the presence of God. And just for a minute, right where you are with your eyes still closed, just raise up one hand and Tell the Lord, thank you. Now, take that other hand and lift that one up and just offer up a hallelujah. Just for a second, tell the Lord how worthy he is. and Give him the honor that is due his name. See, now you've got both hands held high to the heavens. But we're beginning to open ourselves up and our spirits up to the Lord. And I don't know, maybe there's one or two people who want to stand to their feet and 
not just lift their hands, but stand and honor the Lord with the fruit of their lips and the, the fruit of their hearts and just give God the glory that is due his name. God, you are a worthy God, and we worship you this morning. We bless you right now. We thank you for your presence in this place. You are our, our Abba. You are our provider. You are our banner. You are our healer. You are our righteousness. God, you are our peace. Hmm. We thank you that you looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. Our need was bigger than food. Our need was bigger than clothing. It was bigger than shelter. Our need was for a savior. Our need was for your spirit to dwell on the inside of us. God, you said you inhabit the very praises of your people. So inhabit our praise right now. Fill our hearts right now. We bless your name. You are faithful, you are worthy, you are so good. Dwell in the midst of your people. Open our spirits, our hearts, our minds to hear what you want us to hear. Give us the faith, God, to begin to do what you want us to do. God, give us the identity to realize, Lord God, that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. To realize that we are your beloved, Lord God, that we are your children, God, to recognize, God, that you paid the price for us. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, and we bless you this morning. I pray now, God, that you would pour out your spirit and that what you would do what only you can do, things that only you can get the credit for, save souls today, encourage discourage people today heal depression today heal sickness today put marriages back together today give us a vision today help us to be all in today God and we will be so careful to give your name the praise I pray now that you would hide me allow them to see more of you and less of me and when it's all said and done, that you would get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. You can, you can be seated right where you are, but right where you are, just give God one more hand clap of praise in this place. Amen, amen. I don't know about y'all, but I, I just feel the presence of the Lord here this morning. And when I got here, I, I, you know, just felt a little bit different. But, but as we began to tap into God and begin to worship the Lord, I felt his presence. I felt his spirit and his love amongst you. And it, we are called to be the church. And the church is not a building, right? We are the church. And I'm grateful to be a part of the church and to be walking alongside each and every one of you along this journey. But we're going to get ready to get into the word. I'm going to do my level best to preach this morning. Uh, we are in the midst of our current series entitled Upgrade. Upgrade. Anybody feel like your faith has been upgraded so far this year? Your walk with God has been upgraded this year? If it has not, if it has not, you might have missed a couple Sundays. So it's okay to go back. We got the notes. We online. You can go check it all out. Uh, but we are talking about upgrading. And last Sunday uh, was exciting because we talked about our vision of being all in, right? We've been talking about what it really means to be all in as a church, all in as a disciples. But today, I actually want to circle back to a topic from a few weeks ago. Uh, and that topic, we were talking about uh, dwelling in the spirit, living in the spirit. And sometimes the Lord just won't let you go from a place. And he said, you ain't done yet, so we're going to talk about the Spirit some more this morning. Is that okay that we talk about the Spirit this morning? I know the kids are with us this morning, so y'all fill out your uh, fill-in sheets. I believe we got a door prize for you, for everybody who does, all the kids. Adults, we're going to give you some chili, okay? But the kids, the kids, y'all y'all get, get, a, get a prize today. Uh, but, but all of our first-time guests, we do give a handout sheet. Make sure you're following along, filling those in. Uh, if you don't know the answers, it's okay to cheat off your neighbor, right? This is one place where we will not fail you or flunk you for cheating off of your neighbor's paper. All right, so let's jump in. So my title for this morning is You Grow Where You Sow, right? 
you grow where you sow. Now, the question for us today, do I got any people who know the difference between an asset and a liability? Any financial people? Okay, uh, so, uh, okay, about a good, a good number of people. Uh, so you got assets and you got liabilities. And we got tax season coming up. Some of us are excited about getting a refund. Uh, that's a whole other conversation, a whole other teaching. <laughs> With maybe talk about in a small group, but <laughs> but assets and liabilities. So first of all, first of all, if I were to define an asset, actually I must define a liability. If I were to define a liability first, a liability is something that costs you money to hold on to, right? It costs you money to hold on to it. An asset, though, when you own it, it actually helps benefit you, right? It will add money to your bottom line. It grows in value, right? So if we were to start looking at some of those things, your, 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 your loans that you have, your debt, your credit card debt, is that an asset or a liability? A liability. A liability. Very good class. All right. Uh, that trip that you're planning to go to the Bahamas, with the girls and have Bible study on a cruise ship. <laughs> okay. Now, first of all, y'all ain't going on a, on a Royal Caribbean. Let's keep it a buck. Ain't nobody going to Royal Caribbean having Bible study. And, and that, y'all gonna be in that conga line, ain't you? <laughs> All right, let me get refocused. Okay, (laughs) so your vehicle, your car, your car, your car, asset or liability? You know that the moment you drive it off the lot, it goes up in value, doesn't it? It goes down in value. Now, I'm not going to knock anybody, right, that likes to have a nice car, right? My goal with every car that I have is to have that bad boy paid off, right? But but here, 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 we, we talk about assets and liabilities, right? So your home, if you buy a house, right? And it goes up year over year. Is that an asset or a liability? It is an asset. Very good class. Pastor, what does that got to do with today's message? First of all, we're talking about the spirit and we're talking about the flesh. Okay? So every one of us we talked about has three parts. Y'all remember that? What are those parts? Our body, our spirit, and our soul. Right? Three parts. We're going to dig into that here in a second. I want you to understand something this morning. First of all, our flesh, our flesh is a liability. Right? It is a liability. The moment we were born, the moment we drove it off the lot, (laughs) it started decreasing in value. And the older I get, the more my flesh feels like a liability. (laughs) Right? It ain't getting a whole lot better, a whole lot stronger. Stuff is hurting. Uh, stuff is, don't, don't move the same way, right? Our flesh is a liability, but our flesh also lets us down. Yeah. It doesn't assist us in our journey through this life. But the spirit, the spirit, the spirit that is inside of every believer is an asset, right? And, and for us, as, 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 as we sit here today and before we leave, we've got to make a decision of which one we're going to invest our time into, right? In, 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 in natural life, you can take your money and you can buy liabilities, or you can take your money and you can buy assets. In the spiritual, we can take our time and we can invest it into the liability of our flesh, or we can take our time and invest it into the, li- in the asset of our spirit. Y'all see the difference? That's our focal point today. So let me give you the bottom line. The bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. Sowing to the spirit always reaps a better harvest than the flesh. Sowing to the spirit always reaps a better harvest than the flesh. Let's read the text here in Galatians. Galatians says this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever, somebody say whatever. Whatever Whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Very simple principle, sowing and reaping, right? It says, for the one who sows to his own flesh will reap from the flesh happiness, 
Good time. Peace. No, we'll reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. Remember, he says, God is not mocked. In other words, we're not going to play God, right? Uh, understand something. Whatever we sow, we will reap. It says, and let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Let me read that again. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So we've got to sow to one of the two places, flesh or spirit, and oftentimes we get weary. But here the Apostle Paul says, don't get weary in doing the right thing. Don't get weary in coming to church. Don't get weary in reading your scripture. Don't get weary in praying. Don't get weary because in due season, you will reap if you don't give up. It says, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. All right, let's unpack this. I want you to understand something. Today's title, today's sermon is all about you grow where you sow. You grow where you sow. And here we got the Peanuts gang, right? They are sowing. And we see that they are reaping, right? Uh, my, my man Marcus and Marilyn have a phenomenal garden, right, at their house. And they sow, and then ultimately they reap. How many of y'all have benefited from the fruit of the Leaper Garden, right? You got collard greens, yams, potatoes, tomatoes, all that stuff, right? You name it, they got it, right? Uh, but, but here, Paul is telling us God is not mocked. He says, whatsoever somebody sows, that they will also reap. And the thing is, when we sow to the flesh, we will from the flesh reap corruption. But when we sow to the spirit, we will from the spirit reap eternal life. So for all of us, everything you do, every minute of your day, you are sowing somewhere. Now, I want you to understand something. We talked about three parts of the body, and I'm going to break this down for you here in a second. Don't worry about this diagram. It may be confusing, right? But on this diagram, it talks about the body. This is the flesh we live in. It talks about the soul, right, which is our mind, our emotions, right? And then it talks about the spirit. So you are three parts. Every one of us is three parts. Let me break this down for a second. First of all, we're going to talk about the body or the flesh. So the body has what we call gates, right? And there are gates by which every one of us interacts with the world, right? And, and for us, it's very natural, right? We got our eye gate. We got our ear gate, right? We got touch, taste, and smell. And the thing about it is through these gates, that is how things enter in to your mind and into your spirit by the way that you interact with the world. So you have gates, right? And understand something. The things you listen to, uh, they are deposited into your spirit. Amen. The things that you watch, they are deposited into your spirit. The, the, per the people that you spend time around, the relationships you enter into, all of these are gates that we allow things to enter into our spirit. Am I making sense so far? So every time something comes into a gate, it is like sowing, right? And we must understand something that, that we've got to be selective in what we sow. We've got to be selective. And in, 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 y'all ever heard of what you are, what you eat? Y'all heard that statement before? And, and, and the thing is, we don't often realize what we are sowing because we're not really paying attention to it. But he says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, he will also reap. So that's the first part. So your, your, your flesh has these gates. But in your mind, your mind or your soul, right, that's where your imagination is. That's where your conscience is, your memory, right, your reason, your affections are all in your soul, right, all in your mind. But then we have the spirit. Then we have the spirit. And that's what I want to focus on. Because here in the spirit, the spiritual gates, the spiritual gates that we must focus on are faith, right? Our prayer lives, the time we spend in scripture, right? Reading, memorizing, meditating, and the time we spend in worship. See, we were just a few minutes ago lifting our hands, right? Just a few minutes ago offering God praise. Those were feeding our spirit through, uh, through God's methods, right? Uh, but, but so many of us are going to decide when we leave here today, unintentionally, not realizing that we are feeding our flesh 
and starving our spirit. But the thing about it is, we've all got to be intentional about how we spend our time. The thing is, so many of us spend our time sowing into the flesh, right? It's, it's, we are binge watching when we should be Bible reading. We are spreading gossip when we should be spreading the gospel. We're partying and being petty when we are called to be priests in God's kingdom. Now, unfortunately, we, we, have, we have dismissed being Christ-like for following the ways of culture. And we dismiss Bible teaching because the world says that's not the way it is anymore. But understand something, God is not mocked. So you and I must understand something. The flesh, the flesh is a liability. None of these things help us, do they? They feel good, but they have a terrible return. Amen. And, and you, must, you and I must understand something. The Bible says that the spirit gives life, but the flesh profits nothing. And, and, and so often, so often, we are just thinking, I'm taking a, a relaxed moment. I'm taking some self-care, right? But we are actually sowing into liabilities that are pulling away from God's purpose for our lives. Pastor, what do you mean? I want you to understand something. Sowing to the flesh, sowing to the flesh chokes your growth. It chokes out your growth. Now, you see up here, there's a picture of a weed. Now, if, if you are a gardener, uh, weeds are not your friend, are they? Weeds are, are very problematic. You see, the thing about it is weeds pop up fast, right? You don't have to do a whole lot. They just show up, right? You ain't got to plant them. Uh, they, they, they blow in and they take over. Now, if you're trying to plant your greens, beans, tomatoes, and all that kind of stuff, weeds, the presence of weeds are problematic. You see, because the weed, it blocks out sunlight. It robs key nutrients, and it takes up space. And you and I must understand as we are sowing to our flesh, we are blocking out what God's trying to feed in. When we are sowing to our flesh, we are robbing key nutrients that our spirit actually needs. Some of us would have confidence when we step up here to pray if we weren't so, spending so much time in our flesh. If we were spending time in the spirit, we would understand that I am now tapping into God, but so often we are spending time in our own flesh. See, the thing is, our flesh, our flesh is like a weed that will choke out the purpose that God wants for your life. And the thing is that we don't realize, we don't realize is that when we are sowing to our flesh, the thing that we actually want is what gets robbed. Pastor, what do you mean? You see, if I, if I get into a relationship with a person, and now we start to do unbiblical, ungodly things in that relationship. I thought I was going to find happiness. I thought I was going to find peace. I thought I was going to have somebody to hold me at night. But now all I got out of the weed in my life is a divorce, is drama, is my check going to different places because the government is garnishing my wages. You see, the thing that I really wanted got choked out. Mm -hmm. The thing is, if I sow into, dream, into drinking, right, I, I, I sow into smoking uh, and making my own cigarettes and all these other kind of things. If, if I sow into those, I'm going to reap bad decisions. I'm going to reap, right, a, a record. I'm going to reap a DUI. I'm going to reap all of these things that I thought, that were, I thought they had no, no intention. I thought they had no bad effect, but the problem is I sowed to the wrong place. See, if I start sowing into cursing people out because they said something bad about me, and then I try to give them an invite card. Now, I know that ain't BBCC. I know that's, 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 that's Third Baptist down there. <laughs> but, but, but understand something. I, when I lose it on my auntie, and now I can't show up at Christmas dinner, right? When I decide to curse people out, my family that I really wanted to have a good family, to have a family reunion and, and, and have people at my graduation and there for this, that, and the third, I now reap all of this trauma. We must understand when we sow to the flesh and do it our own way, the flesh is a liability. See, you got to understand something. The flesh itself is defective. The flesh is defective. Remember I said the moment you drove it off the lot, the moment you drove it off the lot, it went down in value. Now, parents, 
how many of y'all had to teach your kids how to be bad? Did, did anybody have to teach your kids how to lie? Did you have to teach them how, how, to, how to take stuff that wasn't theirs? Nobody had a lesson on that, did you? It was factory installed, wasn't it? Now, I don't know about, now dads, I don't know about y'all, but when my kids do something bad, my son do something bad, he's my son. Right? He made that honor roll, though. Look at our baby. Let that teacher call, back, call though. Your son. See, the flesh, the flesh is defective, y'all. Now, all of you vehicle owners, have you ever gotten a uh, notice in the mail, a factory recall on your car to tell you your power steering is bad, your airbag is bad, right? Tell you that, hey, if you keep drunk driving this car next week, it may blow up. Yeah. I mean, don't they make it seem like you need to take it in immediately? Yeah. The thing about it, that's our flesh. Our flesh is defective. Now, I want you to understand something. We don't have an option to get out of the flesh. But the flesh is our suitcase. Now, none of us spend all of our time focused on a suitcase going to the airport, do we? We care about what's on the inside. And, and for all of us, our flesh is the thing that carries us through life. But so many of us are spending our time and our energy sowing into our flesh and ignoring what's on the inside. Just like if you got to notice that, that if you don't bring this car in, it may blow up. The next day, you're taking off work. Right? You telling your boss, I can't go in because I'm, I'm taking this over here. And the thing is, when you take it to the dealership, do they charge you anything? Nope. They will fix it on their dime because they realize there was something wrong with the design. And we must understand that when we start to submit our flesh to God and say, God, fix this mess. God starts to transform your life. But so often we are riding around in this defective thing and sowing into it and spending all of our time on it. But we ignore our spirit. So instead of spending all of your time sowing to the flesh, I want you to do this. I want you to feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. Feed, feed your spirit. How many coffee drinkers we got in the, in the building? Amen. A whole ministry by yourself. If that coffee is down, some of y'all may turn around and go back home. <laughs> when you don't get that coffee in the morning, you're like, look, don't talk to me till I've had my what? My coffee. Y'all have been through the whole day and not eating, and you get about 2, 3 o'clock and you different. Y'all remember them Snickers commercials used to come on, and there was a whole different person? And they'd be like, here, just take this. And they come back to who they are. They are hangry, right? I want you to flip that for a second because spiritually, many of us are hangry and don't even know it. See, we were designed, we are designed uh, after God's image, but understand something, God is a spirit. Grab hold of this for a second. God is a spirit, so we are made after his image and his likeness. God is not flesh, so you are not like God in the flesh. You have a spiritual aspect that is after his image. So we've got to get to the place where we stop spending so much time focused on the flesh and we start to feed the spirit because that is what connects to God. That is where he, he is glorified. That is where his strength is. That's where you find all your power. That's where you find everything you need in the spirit, not in the flesh. So if you're wondering, why am I off? Why, why I got an attitude all the time? Why am I struggling with this? Probably because you're hangry, right? You ain't prayed in a week. You haven't fasted, right? You haven't worshipped. You haven't been to church in Lord knows how long. You haven't been to a small group in Lord knows how long. You are probably hangry. How does this work, though? How does this work? Pastor, what, what does this all mean to my life? When I start to feed my spirit, here's what happens. First of all, we sow. We sow. Now, as I was researching this, I started looking. A seed, when it's, when it's dropped off in the ground, it goes through a process, right? That seed goes into the ground, and the first thing that's, that happens is the seed is sown, right? Now, you can have a bean sitting on the counter forever, Amen. and it won't do nothing. Amen. But when you put it into the soil, and the right conditions are there, the right temperature, the right level of moisture, and it's buried in the dirt, all that stuff penetrates the shell, and the shell breaks apart. This is what I love about God, because his word is sitting there on your phone. His word is sitting there in, in the back of your car, getting a, sun, getting a suntan. 
Y'all remember the old Bible people put in the, in, the, in the visor? Some of y'all too young for that. But the Bible look all worn and red, and it's just been sitting in the, in the back windshield. Anyway, that's another sermon. But understand something. The first step is sowing. It's sowing. And, and the word, when it starts to get sown into your life, and you start to read it and, and meditate on it, right, that, that, that bitterness you have and that pride you have, that's the outer shell. And it starts to break down. But then on top of that, after it is sown, right, what happens is it starts to take root. It starts to take root in your life. And now that it's broken apart, it goes down into the dirt so that it can be fed. So when we start to be disciples and walk as disciples and that word penetrates our heart, we start to get the root of Jesus into our lives. And the thing that you must understand is, is, is there is so much dirt surrounding us, but we can still thrive in the dirt. Now, dirt can cause things to die and decay. But the same dirt with the right seed planting it can now produce growth. And you can pull from the trauma of your past. You can pull from the disappointments. You can pull from the people as long as you are rooted in Christ Jesus. But on top of that, right, on top of that, the last thing that happens is growth. Now, every parent knows when y'all remember y'all kids came home and they had no projects. And in those projects, they would be trying to grow something in the, in the cup. And they would put the little bean in there, put the dirt in there. And 13 seconds later, they're like, where's the plant? It, it should be growing. Right? But, but so often, they don't understand that it takes time. And the thing about it is growth. Growth happens when you emerge, when the, when the seed emerges from the dirt. And it starts to reach for the sun. And some of y'all can get this on the way home. And, and understand something. When, when you got dirt around you, and you finally, the word of Jesus has taken root in your life. And finally, you get some worship in you. And you start to reach through the dirt and make your hands up to the sun. The rays from the sun will penetrate everything else going on and feed the plant. See, to understand something, your worship is powerful. And here's the thing I've learned, that just because I see dirt, I've got to realize that I've still planted a seed. And just because I don't see it emerge, there's still a lot going on. And I've got to, I'm not going to give up on the plant because I understand the power of seasons. And you and I must get to the place where we realize that we are disciples, that we are called of God, we are called by God. And when his word is planted in our lives, it's going to do a thing. And God said that the good work that he began, he will bring it forward till completion. But we, our job is to sow and to not give up. See, here's the thing I've learned. I've learned this. I've learned is that God will match your effort. God will match your effort. Now, now I don't want to show hands, but some of y'all got good jobs, and, and some of them good jobs got 401Ks. And, and the 401K, the thing that's nice about the 401K is that when you put your part in, what does the company do? They match you. They, they, they match your part, right? So, so here's the thing, right? God will match your effort. And, and here with the 401K, for some jobs are like, you put in 3%, company will match 3%. So you get... 6%, right? And the thing that I've learned about God, the Bible says that when you draw near to God, he will do what? He will draw near to you. So he matches your effort. And, and just like we talked about the seed might be under the ground and you can't see it, but understand something, he's still working. You got to understand that he's still moving. And there is a process of whatsoever we sow, we will reap. And understand, every time you read a scripture and you memorize it, God's matching it. Understand that every time you worship and lift up your hands, God is matching it. You've got to understand, when you sow towards holiness and you say, you know what? I'm going to get out of this relationship that's no good. I'm going to stop uh, doing things that are ungodly in my relationship. God will match it. When you say, God, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to sacrifice for you. Pastor called a fast and I'm going to fast today. Guess what? God will match it. See, when you start to sow spiritually, that's when anointing starts to come. And, and, and here's what I've learned. The more I'm around Jesus, the more I am exposed to him, the more I look like him. And, and here's the thing. You are going to be powered by something. Now, if I pulled out a, tri a, a double-A battery and I said, hey, power your vacuum cleaner with this. Power your, 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 your laptop with this. It's not going to last very long, is it? But if I take that same device and I plug it into an outlet, it's got unlimited power as long as you pay the bill. You and I must understand something in our flesh. 
we're operating on limited batteries. In our flesh, we are operating under limited strength. And sometimes as a disciple, we're walking and trying to run and we're tripping and fumbling and stumbling. And it's not going very well. Sometimes it ain't pretty. And the thing is, right, I don't know about your life, but when I make decisions to start living for God, everything don't, don't turn out too well. Because I get discouraged. I get new tests, tire flat, uh, new bills, right? All of these things happening because I'm now trying to live for God, right? The thing is, sometimes it ain't pretty. But Paul tells us, don't be weary in doing well. Because in due season, you will reap. Now, my son runs track. And every race, when they come around the final curve, I got any track runners in here? Anybody? Had? Anybody ever run track before? Y'all would have messed my whole analogy up. I should have planned this ahead. All right, I got three people. So they got different races. But I notice when they run the distance races, they start out real fast. Too fast. But by the time they get to the last turn, this thing called an invisible monkey jumps on their back. He's a gorilla, and he's like, come on, take me the rest of the way. And their form goes out of the window. They're huffing. They're puffing. They look like they're about to have cardiac arrest. They are struggling. But understand something. Their parents get up on, that, on, that, uh, on the fence or on the gate, and they start to cheer them along. And they tell them, Run! Keep going. Keep pumping your arms. Don't give up. I have never seen a parent stand up and say, oh, this looks hard. You should quit. Give up. This is too much for you. I've never seen that. Spiritually, the Apostle Paul is telling us, even though it's hard, even though you're tired, don't give up. Keep pumping your arms. Don't stop praying. Just keep running. Come on back to church again. See, God is looking at you, and here's the thing I love, is that I'm not doing this in my own strength. He's given me his spirit. He's given you his spirit. The God who created the heavens and the earth lives inside of every believer. So God is telling you the good work I began in your life, I am going to bring it forward to completion. So do not give up. Let's say, for example, you got uh, some pain in your past. Might be a broken relationship. And we're getting ready to end right here. It, 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 it could be a broken relationship. You feel like giving up. And, you know, auntie or uncle so-and-so, they said some things that hurt you. But when you start sowing into the spirit, you start to learn what God said about the situation. And, and, and you could block them on Facebook. You could decide to never show up again at the cookout or family reunion. Or you could start sowing to the spirit. And the thing is, when you start sowing to the spirit, you are going to, from the spirit, reap a different result. See, so often... The Bible says that God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that will he reap. Now, we have so much confidence in a scientific principle and so much doubt in a godly one. Let that sink in for a minute. You trust the forecast. You trust when you throw it. If I throw this up, you trust that it's going to hit the ground. But we don't trust. If we sow spiritually, we will reap God's results. And the thing that you must understand is when we start to say, Lord, I forgive because the Bible tells me that I need to forgive. I'm sowing to the spirit. When, when, when I start to give sacrificially and I believe that if I sow into God's kingdom, I will reap from God's kingdom. I'm sowing spiritually. Right. But understand something. When you keep praying over a difficult situation, the Bible says you're going to reap. Now, so many of us get it twisted because just like that little kid waiting for that, that bean to sprout in the cup 13 seconds later, we're like, God, well, you ain't moved yet. They still tripping. 
It's time for me to be petty. Petty mode activated. I'm speaking to somebody. I, yeah, I'm speaking to somebody right there. <laughs> you start to fast over the situation. God, I'm, I'm going to attack this spiritually. Why? Because the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not fleshly. But they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. You and I must understand something. We are spiritual beings. We, we, we just have a suitcase called the flesh. And when you get to the point and the place, right, where you say, you know what, I'm sowing to the spirit. I'm going to spend my time sowing in the spirit because God's going to match my energy. And, and all my job is is to keep sowing and don't give up. Ain't that good? I mean, you think about that for a second. I got my part. God's got his part. But we have left God out because we're sowing to the flesh. But here, I want to challenge you today. Just like Paul says, he says, let us not grow weary in doing well. For in due season, somebody say due season. Due season, we will reap if we do not give up. Your job is to sow and not to give up. God's job is to provide the result. You and I, you and I must understand here today, you will grow where you sow. You will grow where you sow. And maybe today you've been looking at your life, and we're going to stop right here. You're saying, Pastor, my life, I, I don't have a whole lot of spiritual fruit in my life. I got drama, and I got trauma. I've got pain, but I don't know my purpose. People have let me down, and I have let God down. As the music begins to play softly, I want you to just take a moment and think about where you are. Take a minute and ask yourself, how have I spent my time? Where have I been sowing? Have I been sowing to my flesh or have I been sowing to my spirit? I want you to understand that you're going to grow where you sow. Your flesh is a liability. And maybe today you need to repent for putting so much effort and energy into the flesh. See, there's a factory recall, and God is saying this flesh is corrupt. He says, die to it daily. Crucify the flesh. Deny the flesh. He tells us over and over because he realizes that flesh profits nothing. And it's not your fault. Because when Adam sinned, the flesh was corrupted, and that corruption passed on to you and me. But God in his infinite wisdom sent his son Jesus in the flesh to overcome sin, to die in our place, and to give us a right to eternal life. Maybe you don't even know Jesus, but today you want to know him. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to make your way down to this altar because I want to pray with you that Jesus would, be, would come into your heart and be the Lord of your life and wash you clean and begin to move in ways that only he could move and only he could get the credit for. If that's you, just begin to make your way down. As that person is coming down, I want to open up this altar for those who are looking at their lives and saying, you know what, Pastor? I've been sowing to my flesh for so long and I think I'm hangry. I need a spiritual move in my life. The Bible lets us know that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil. And today you want to begin sowing to your spirit more consistently. You want to be intentional today, but you don't quite know how and you don't think you've got the strength. And you're saying, Pastor, could you just pray for me? I want you to make your way down to the altar too. As you begin to say, I'm sowing in my spirit. I'm walking in my spirit. I'm giving God the first place in my life so that I could be walking in accordance with what he wants for my life. If that's you, just make your way down to this altar. We're going to pray for you this morning. As we still seek God's face, maybe there's somebody out there who's saying, I've got an issue in my life, Pastor, and I just need some encouragement. I feel weary. I feel weak. 
I don't know how I'm going to make it. And I heard what you said about don't grow weary and doing well. But if I were being honest with you, I'm so weary that I don't know how I can take another step. I'm so weary, I don't know how. It was all I could do just to get here today. Would you pray for me? If that's you, I want you to make your way down to the altar too because I want to pray for you this morning. The Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. And we're going to go and we're going to engage in warfare this morning and believe God by his spirit to set some people free, to believe God by his spirit to give some people some hope, to, to believe God by his spirit to take us to the level where he wants us to be as followers of Jesus. If that's you, as we begin to pray this morning, just make your way. There is room. There is room. There is room. As we pray at the altar, just have that moment with, with God alone and begin to pray, repent, and ask God to fill you with his spirit, to give you power and authority over that flesh. In Jesus' name. Now, God, we thank you for the words you have spoken. Thank you, Lord God, for those who have heard it. And I pray, God, that we would go forward and put it into practice. Help us to be not only hearers of the word, but doers of what it says. Lord God, I know you are faithful to perform your word. So I pray, God, that we would see your word at work, plant it in our spirit so that the enemy cannot steal it. I pray for 30, 60, and 100-fold return what was spoken here today. 
Raise up spirit-led, spirit-filled disciples. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. We're going to get ready to transition into communion. Did y'all get anything out of today's message? Yeah. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Bro Ade, who will lead us in communion this morning. Good morning. So my task is to lead us, of course, in communion. Uh, we are just blessed today because we're getting our, our grub on, I'm going to say, three times today in church. The first time was through this word that Pastor gave us. Amen. Second time is through our communion. And then the third time is going to be through our first Sunday fellowship. Amen. So God is, is keeping and blessing us. But the most important thing is that we do it spiritually. And in doing that, God will continue to move and bless us in our lives. Amen. So in our communion today, I'm going to go straight to the word. Uh, and it comes to us from Corinthians. So I'm going to go right there. It says in 1 Corinthians 11, starting at the 27th verse, it says, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. So the scripture isn't about condemnation. It's about remembering that we got to examine ourselves whenever we participate in communion. It's about checking ourselves and saying, God, am I, am I where I want to be? Am I where you want me to be? And let me get back right where I need to be. Amen? And so we dedicate this time in our communion to doing that. And that's what it's about. So let's take a moment to examine ourselves and pray. Father, we thank you for this time and these winners we look and we examine ourselves, Lord. God, we ask for forgiveness where we've fallen short. In this flesh, Lord, we struggle daily. But God, your grace and mercy is sufficient. So we dedicate, Lord, this, this time and this hour to you, Father. Allow us, Lord God, to, in this communion, to rebalance and reset the things that we're sowing into. We want to sow into the asset of your spirit, not the liability of our flesh. We thank you for how you are moving. And we look forward to what you will do as we dedicate this time and this communion to you. We receive your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue with our communion. And it's time you should have your communion cup. If you don't have one or you need one, just lift your hand up and we'll make sure you get one. Got a couple folks over here. Trey's coming to you. Amen. Everybody else is set, right? All right. I hear all that crinkling. I know you got it. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go back to the word. Verse 23, it says, For I received from the Lord... But I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the body together. part say amen all right we there all right the next part says in the same way also he took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me 
Let's drink together. Amen. So as we partook of communion, we shared in the body, the broken body, because Jesus was battered and bruised for our iniquities. And then the blood that was poured out that washes us from snow. Clean as clean and white as snow. Amen. And so that's what the Lord did for us. And the least we could do is to dedicate our hearts and minds, our flesh, everything to him. Dedicate our lives to him. And when he does that, he gives us his gift of the Holy Spirit. He gives us all that we need and a purpose-driven life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for just this opportunity to participate in communion today. God, we do it with purpose. Father, we do it with the prayer, Lord, that we rededicate our hearts and our minds to you. Lord, in this 2024 time, we need you. There's so much going on in this earth. There's so much scandal, and war, Lord God, disease. But Lord, you are still good. Help us to remember to sow into prayer and to sow into your word to be encouraged and not sow into what we see on the news. Help us recognize that Lord, that you still reign and that you are good. We honor you and we thank you for what you're going to do as a result of this time that we've dedicated to you in our worship, in our prayer, in our communion. We ask all these things right now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, get ready to transition out of today's service. Uh, but before we do, we always talk about next steps here at BBCC because it's really about what we're going to do with the information, what we're going to do with what God has challenged us to do. Right. What do y'all what I love to say? Information plus application equals. Man, that was a little weak. All right. So <laughs> let me try that one more time. Information plus application equals transfer. All right. Good job, class. I, I think I pulled it out of y'all with li liabilities and assets. Yeah. <laughs> so at any rate, uh, we're going to uh, talk about next steps. So here at BBCC, it's all about what do we do with what we just learned. So maybe God is calling somebody today to connect as a member of this church. You're saying, you know what, Pastor, I've been coming for a while, and, and I feel like I need to be planted. I need to be in a place where I'm going to be encouraged. I'm gonna, I want to have people who are supporting me, right? If that's you and you feel the Lord leading you to that, just grab that card in front of you. It has a simple QR code that says connect. Uh, if you don't like doing that kind of stuff, you can come see me. Uh, we can get you plugged into our next new members discipleship class because we believe that healthy things grow. And we're believing God that he is going to do great things in growing this ministry. We have seen him do that time and time again. And we are believing for greater and greater. But then also maybe you didn't feel led to come up here uh, for prayer, but you still have a prayer request. That car, you can grab it. Just scan that QR code beside it. Fill out the information and our prayer team will be praying for you. We have people who pray around the clock for our prayer needs. So make sure you grab that as well. But then also we do a lot of outreach. And if you are interested in partnering with us to reach the community, you can you can scan that QR code about volunteering, giving your time. Uh, we do have some great outreach activities coming up this month that members can take a part of, and you don't have to be a member to participate as well. So we are believing God, looking forward to some powerful and some mighty things uh, through our connection as disciples, through our prayer for one another, and also to our service into our community. So those are the next steps that we always talk about. But I want to challenge you for your own next step. Look to the Lord as he's guiding you, as he's leading you. If you were a first-time guest, make sure you come see me. I want to meet everybody. I want to love on you for a second. Get a, I got a gift I want to give you as well. Uh, but the last thing that we want to do today is worship God in our giving. Amen. Because giving is an act of worship. And the Bible lets us know that God loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. And this is not the kind of church that we tell you what to give. We just tell you how, right? That how means give cheerfully and give sacrificially, right? And, and God is faithful to do what he, what he said he would do. 
When we give, we are also sowing, right? And God's not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. I've learned in my life, if I need to grow money, I got to sow money, right? Uh, and God takes that and meets all the needs of the church. But he also, in turn, remember, God matches Man, this sermon is just tying right in, ain't it? God matches uh, everything that we do. So I'm not going to talk, talk a hole in your head, but I want you to uh, give the Lord your best gift. Give him your first and your best, not your worst and your last. Your worst and your last. If you're texting your amount, the information is up on the screen. Also, you can use that QR code to give uh, that way. And if you are old school and like the envelopes, you can go and give your amount by Mike in the back. Mike, raise your hand. There's an envelope box right there. Uh, we will be having our chili cook-off apparently today. Uh, so I don't know who's going to win, but I'm looking forward to see who gets to do that. But make sure you participate in that as well. But uh, thank you for your giving, uh, and we're going to get ready to have the benediction. Y'all ready to go? Y'all yep. are ready to go. I got one no and 17 yeses. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we're going, we're going to uh, have a benediction, say the blessing as well. Uh, today has been an awesome service. I hope that you were blessed. Um, I want to encourage you also, go to small group. If you haven't been there in a while, so spiritually and go to small group because life is happening in small group. And those who show up, they grow up, right? So we are just believing God for great things, but we're going to have the benediction and the blessing and transition out of today's service. So let's look to the Lord together. Father, thank you so much for today's worship. Thank you for our guests, God, who came uh, for the first time. God, thank you for those who invited them. Thank you for people, Lord God, who are passionate and excited about the kingdom. Lord God, we believe that life with you is as good as it gets. It doesn't get any better than life with Jesus. And God, we pray, Father God, that we would experience abundant life that you promised in your word. I pray, Lord God, that you will keep us as we leave this place and we will never leave your presence. Make your face shine upon us and give us your everlasting peace. I pray, Lord God, for the food that we are about to receive in the back. May it serve to nourish and strengthen our bodies. May, may we make memories, fellowship together, and, and love one another as the body of Christ. Lord, thank you for our guests who came for the first time. Thank you for those who are returning. Thank you for those who made decisions today. Thank you for the growth process of discipleship. God, I pray, Father God, that you would, Lord God, make your face shine upon us and give us your everlasting peace. Father, this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. That concludes today's service. You are dismissed. Make sure you love on somebody on your way out. And first-time guests, please see me.